In this video, I'm going to go over Coulomb's law in vector form. So that means we're going to include the direction of the force as well. So let's say we got two charges, charge Q1 and Q2, and they are like charges, like let's say Q1 is positive charge, then Q2 is also a positive charge, and we all know like charges repel each other. That's why uh, one force is in this direction, the other force is in this direction. They are repelling each other. They want to go away from each other. Or let's say this is a negative charge and this is a negative charge. They're still going to repel each other. So this is the case I am taking over here. So we got two charges. Both are same. Like if this is positive, this is positive. So they are going to repel each other. So we're going to find out the forces on each charge due to the other charge. So let's say we got charge Q1 and Q2 and they are separated by a distance <coughs> R. So Coulomb's force acting on charge Q1 due to charge Q2 is this F12 in this direction. So force on charge, so let me write down the equation, the force on charge 1 due to charge 2. F12 is going to be, we're going to write the Coulomb's uh, force formula or electrostatic force formula from Coulomb's law, which is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 over R square. And we're going to include the direction on right hand side as well. So this is basically the force on charge Q1 due to charge q2 so the force is moving in this direction as we all know it's a central force that's why we i made a line just going to, a straight line going through the centers of the charges so this direction the force this is the force the direction and we're going to represent it by unit vector r21 that means force from charge q2 towards charge q1 so this direction so it's going to be r to one gap or we can replace one over four by epsilon naught by a k so f12 is going to be equal to one over four by epsilon naught q1 q2 over r square into r21 some students really get confused with these notations of 1, 2, or 2, 1. Just look into the forces in this direction. See, from R to, from Q2 towards Q1, and we represent it R21. Okay, but the force is on the charge Q1. That's why we wrote the force on charge 1 due to charge 2. We wrote it F12. All right. Similarly, we're going to write the equation for force on charge Q2 due to charge Q1. So let's write that down also. So F21, that means force on charge Q2 due to charge Q1 is going to be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 over r square into r 1 2 because the force due to the charge q1 is going to be in this direction towards charge q2 so direction is from 1 towards 2 so r 1 2 cap all right now So here, let me write it down. So R21 is basically, is the unit vector. So unit vector directed from, directed from Q2 to Q1. Similarly here, R12 is a unit vector directed from charge q1 to charge q2 
okay but you know r1 and r2 are unit vector they are equal to each other but they are opposite in direction one is going in this direction the other is going in that direction so we're going to include the direction by including negative sign so that tells us both the unit vector are in opposite direction so now if i plug in r12 here equal to negative r21 then the second formula here becomes f21 is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 over r square here it becomes negative r21 because r12 is equal to negative r21 so let's take out this negative sign in the front that gives me f21 is going to be equal to negative 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 over r square into r21 now if we look at both the formulas if we compare them look at this part over here 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 over r square q1 q2 over r square into r21 unit vector r21 unit vector so this means this part is basically is equal to f12 so we can write it down like f21 is equal to negative sorry f21 is equal to negative f12 or we can write them f12 is equal to negative f21 so that means the forces exerted by two point charges on each other are equal and opposite to each other so this this basically uh, coincides with you know newton's third law of motion that states that action and reaction are equal and opposite so coulomb's law from this formula is in accordance with the newton's third law of motion so due to this fact the coulomb's force is considered to be newtonian in nature newtonian in nature all right so that's all about coulomb's law in the vector form that basically they can ask you a question like hey uh, show that uh, using coulomb's law uh, in a vector form that forces exerted by two point charges on each other are equal and opposite so you can prove it using that so that proves it all right and the forces or you can say coulomb law is newtonian in nature all right thanks for watching the video guys there will be new video coming soon and stay tuned and please share and subscribe to the channel to support my educational videos Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.